Well, it looks like the Reverend Al Sharpton is about to make his internet debut, so to speak, as he is getting ready to launch a media watchdog group called The Shift Daily. They're media watchdogs, and they're going to set the record straight. Apparently, this is a group that is going to look for any wrongdoing on the internet. And they are taking aim at conservatives who report on politics on the web. And it will offer an online counterattack against those who dare criticize our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Y'all stand up right now. You got to Thank you, Jamie Foxx. That was inspirational. And I think it really sets the tone for what we can expect to see on Al Sharpton's blog, a total Obama love fest. After all, it has done wonders for Al Sharpton's career. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, Al Sharpton's come a long way since his days as a cocaine dealer and FBI informant. And I bet a lot of you haven't heard about all that. Al Sharpton, drug dealer turned snitch who ratted out his friends in the mob. And if you haven't heard about all this, you are in luck because I'm about to tell you the whole story. So pull up a bar stool and let me tell you the tale of the chronic master race baiter, Al Sharpton. Since the Obama administration took over the White House, there has been a resurgence of civil rights activist Al Sharpton, one of Barack Obama's loudest cheerleaders. The Reverend now has his own TV show on MSNBC. He has his own talk radio show, a best-selling book, and is a regular at the White House. He hangs out with Obama's aides and cabinet members, members of Congress, business executives, military leaders, and the president himself. In fact, Sharpton had a choice seat for the president's inauguration. He attended Michelle Obama's 50th birthday party and even watched the Super Bowl with the Obama family. The president has sought the man's counsel and has embraced him publicly. But what most people don't know about the Reverend Al Sharpton is that he was once a cocaine dealer who turned into an FBI informant after federal agents caught him on camera negotiating a coke deal. Rather than face criminal charges, the Reverend panicked and agreed to become a snitch for the FBI. I mean, the guy is a complete joke. He is a race pimp and just a complete fraud. It's just so perfect uh, that they're reporting this about him because I'll guarantee you he was reporting on black people. I will guarantee you he wasn't allowed to pull the shenanigans he pulled and create the political diversions where he was acting like he was fighting the political establishment in New York without some serious backing. In April of 2014, the Smoking Gun released a lengthy investigation that uncovered remarkable details about Sharpton's past work as an informant for a joint organized crime task force comprised of FBI agents and NYPD detectives, as well as his dealings with an assortment of wise guys. Before hanging out at the White House, Sharpton surrounded himself with powerful mob bosses, mafia figures with nicknames like Benny Eggs, Baldy Dom, and The Chin. Once he was flipped by the FBI, he ratted these guys out and even helped take down the Genovese crime family, the largest mafia outfit in the country. Early this morning, North Jersey, Operation Intrepid is underway. Tommy Pee Wee DePhillips arrested at his home. One of 41 elected leaders and associates of the Genovese organized crime family operating in northern New Jersey that were rounded up today by New Jersey State Police. Toronto and the others are charged with running a million dollar a week racketeering operation centered in, but not limited to, the Newark area. Using bugs and a video camera, cops were able to see and record the group's daily activities, which included at times running a casino there. The grand jury has been hearing evidence against the Toronto faction and indictments are expected. While secretly working for the FBI, Al Sharpton became a well-known civil rights activist and public figure. 
He received widespread media attention and national recognition in the late 1980s for his role in the Tawana Brawley rape allegations. After a 15-year-old teenager claimed she was gang raped by a group of white police officers. Tawana Brawley is a 16-year-old girl whose story is the talk of New York these days. The New York State teenager who claims that she was abducted and raped by six white men. Tawana Brawley became a household name and Al Sharpton became her spokesperson. We want to show the world how low down, dogged, and callous the state of New York yes. is. The case quickly generated a national media sensation because of her age, the persons accused, and the shocking state in which Brawley was found after her alleged rape. Tawana Brawley said they left her nearly dead, a gang of white men who raped her and scrawled racial epithets on her body. A hideous story, and all this year, her family and her advisors have embellished it and refused to cooperate with an investigation they say is a cover-up. But it wasn't long before a grand jury determined that the entire story was a hoax. Tawana Brawley fabricated her claims to avoid punishment for staying out late. There is no evidence of her being kidnapped and zero forensic evidence of any kind of sexual attack. I have not deceived my family, my advisors, and most of all, my people. Oh. Oh. The accused were completely exonerated, and Tawana Brawley's attorneys lost their license to practice law. In and around the area of America, civil rights has been seriously damaged. Uh, I think that uh, Maddox and Mason, uh, two of the most uh, cynically evil characters to have ever operated or pretend to operate under the Civil Rights Banner. Uh, the Reverend Sharpton has done some good things in the past. I feel very bad for him that he allowed himself to be so deeply involved in the fraud. No justice! No justice! No justice! The public has been had. I mean, he did it good. I mean, David had. David had. That's a lot of crap. No, no, brother, you have your job. That's a lot of crap. Brother, and I got brother, no, I got it. Hold on, I got it. Oh, hold on. I got it. Sharpton and people like him are known historically for constantly, constantly uh, trying to uh, play on our differences rather than our commonalities. Hit it, hit it, hit it. The Reverend Al Sharpton is now accused of not paying taxes and stealing $250,000 from a charity group. In Manhattan Supreme Court, Reverend Sharpton was formally accused of taking in more than a quarter million dollars for his national youth movement. The money allegedly was donated over a three-year period to support youth programs, but State Attorney General Robert Abrams says lots of that cash went into Al Sharpton's pocket. Yeah, so many charges that Dr. King has, so your charges go on. Where's all of the mob money? Where's the tickets go? This is disappointing. That's what we can do better. What about that? The public is manipulated, and people like Al Sharpton, opportunists, blood-sucking opportunists, are the ones who do it. I was not and am not a rat. Al Sharpton was a cocaine-dealing wannabe thug, you know, and he flipped over to the FBI only to save his own ass. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now that the cat is out of the bag, or, or the rat is out of the bag, I guess you could say, he has taken this position where he is publicly portraying him, himself as, as some sort of Elliot Ness. Look how he's rewarded. This guy uh, has been rewarded big time, and on top of that, is, is, is uh, shown as being, quote, a leader. He's a misleader. For longtime observers of Al Sharpton's checkered past and criminal activities, it remains a mystery how he is still a prominent figure in the national spotlight. One has to wonder if he ever fully escaped the grip of the FBI or if he has now become an agent provocateur for the globalist. After all, Al Sharpton has secured his role as an antagonist and a race baiter for the Obama administration. Nice try, but we got you.